Oh, positives? Positives are what you want on this subject matter? This is the challenge? All right. All right. I hear you in the comments and the other feedback that I get. Today is the day for positives. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. But today, today belongs to positivity, spirit of the holiday, and all that other stuff. I'm going to pull it off. I am telling you, in the same time span that this, I was about to say, woe begotten, this franchise (laughs) has somehow alienated itself from its only regular contributing really good player, I'm going to find a way to do it. And I'm actually going to turn serious here and pull it off. Because one of the things that needs to be stressed here is that none of us, I'm guessing, myself for sure, would be anywhere near as critical of Ben Charrington in particular if he hadn't already assembled something worth supporting. Is that a fair thing to say? Put it this way. Let's say there were no players here. Let's say there were no prospects. Would you care if anything was being done toward fortifying the 2023 roster? Nope. Not at all. You'd be calling for his head. I know I would. But that hasn't happened. And the reason that hasn't happened is that he's done a pretty decent job. Not great. Probably not even very good. But pretty decent, I think, is a fair descriptor of assembling enough young talent that we can be looking at Quinn Priester and Mike Burroughs from a pitching standpoint, Nick Gonzalez, Andy Rodriguez, Henry Davis from the position player standpoint, all in Indianapolis this coming spring. That's a pretty nice handful of prospects. Again, not great, probably not even very good, at least based on their 2022 showings, but very much with promise. And if you look at the way those prospects were acquired, almost all of them were to the credit of Charrington and or his scouting slash development staff. And that's a positive. That's a good thing. The main reason that Charrington was hired was to make sure that there would be a constant and quality collection of youth moving through the pipeline and getting to Pittsburgh. Am I doing all right so far? I am? Yeah? Okay, good. I'm going to keep trying it after this break. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. I can also point to other successes at the major league level, really, no no joke, no sarcasm, there's no punchline coming here. The main one is O'Neill Cruz, and yes, I understand that not all of these players will have been acquired by Charrington. Priester wasn't acquired by Charrington. Cruz wasn't acquired by Charrington. Cruz was the product of an outstanding trade by Neil Huntington, and yes, I managed to say that in the same sentence as well that sent Tony Watson out to the West Coast and brought Cruz back. It's exactly the type of prospect that Huntington should have been seeking all along, but it's also the type of prospect that Charrington promised to be pursuing above and all else when it came to affixing his priorities. He wanted to have ceiling guys. He wanted to have guys who could top out really high, even if they weren't as safe 
as other prospects, even if they weren't going to be, you know, the Colin Moran types who were never going to embarrass you. Colin was always going to go out and get a good effort every once in a while. He'd put one over the fence and you'd say, all right, yeah, but he was never going to be much more than what we actually saw with our own eyes in Pittsburgh. And those were the kinds of deals that ended up undoing Huntington. Charrington has, for the most part, been more in line with the Huntington trade for Cruz with his acquisitions. That said, Charrington and his staff had to play a part in getting Cruz to the major league level while also managing the kid's own desire to stay at shortstop and being flexible enough that even though they sent every signal conceivable that they didn't want him to stay at shortstop, they still gave in and understood and respected that if you have that bat at the shortstop position, you can do a lot of things with your lineup. Not least of which is having a third baseman who doesn't have a lot of home run potential. That's a good move. There have been good moves on the pitching front. Acquiring Rowanzi Contreras via trade is a really, really good pitching move. Acquiring Johan Oviedo looks to be a very good pitching move. And when you add up Contreras and Oviedo and Mitch Keller, and I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not giving anybody associated with the Pirates other than Keller himself any credit for Keller. I'm not taking this too far. But then you add into that. Luis Ortiz seemingly coming out of nowhere with 100 mile an hour gas. All of a sudden, the one thing that seemed the most impossible for the Pirates to achieve in the short term now doesn't seem all that crazy, does it? Meaning that they could have a competitive rotation with a whole lot of question marks and a whole lot of experience to still be gained and everything else. But it's taking shape in my eyes, sooner than I expected, just within the framework of the rotation. Let's remember that Sherrington also acquired David Bednar and that he was instructed at a high enough level here that he quickly and deservedly became not just a closer, but an all-star closer. And I'm looking at the clock here. I think I did it. I think I, I think I did a whole segment on positives here, and I never once mentioned that they alienated their best. Oh, I just did it, but we come back, J1Q. says, considering that next season is most definitely a punt for the Pirates, is there any chance that there will be hope for the next few seasons, or will they continue to punt until a miracle happens? Benny, I I would love to tell you that they've got some kind of target date, and that they're keeping it a secret from all of us. Every single individual, all the way to the top, at 115 Federal Street, answers anything remotely resembling a question about a target date or a target year with the same thing, which is that we don't know. I have learned to believe them on this. Maybe that's from the cynical standpoint, meaning that they would perpetually be kicking the can down the road to preserve their own jobs, et cetera, et cetera, like we started to see with Huntington and Kyle Stark and all that gang. But maybe it's also because there's a lot of things that they can't control. And here I go again with the positivity. There were things that happened, for example, and most notably in 2022 with the prospects that were out of their control. They couldn't control the long-term injuries to Gonzalez and Davis, their top two hitting. Well, they used to be the top two hitting prospects. Now it's Rodriguez. But they couldn't control that. They couldn't control that Quinn Priester couldn't really get going on the mound until midway through the summer. So if we're talking about guys like those five, if we're talking about the next tier, something were to occur, that's that's why sports people in general don't like giving timetables, especially longer term timetables. 
but I don't feel like the Pirates are lying on this one. I just don't hear from them that there is any such thing. Now, do they have to punt in 2023 to revisit that subject for a billionth time? Heck no. And finally, maybe because of the Reynolds spat, you're starting to hear Charrington and others in the organization acknowledging that, that it is time. I look like the fool for three or four months being the only one to say it. Now they're saying it. So does their saying it accelerate the timetable as kind of a, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy? Maybe, but I don't think so. I think it's just verbiage. Until you see moves that look different, like moves from the past, then they're just doing the same thing. Oh, and by the way, spending roughly the same amount of money. Oh, and by the way, still prioritizing Super 2 over having players come up, get experience in the majors, and maybe even make the team in Pittsburgh a little bit better. Or a lot better. Until we see those things happen, and I mean happen en masse, I'm not going to believe any of their non-punting declarations. So, yes, they're punting next year. How much longer? You know, the way this sort of thing tends to work, and the way it kind of did with the Huntington slash Stark situation, is that people have to start feeling like their time is running out. They have to start feeling heat. And this is where I get to the real reasons why Bob Nutting is not a good owner. It's not just the payroll. In fact, I don't even put payroll as number one on his list of owner shortcomings. To me, it's always been about accountability. And then from there, over delegation, excessively trusting the people under him. He's hilariously to me accused of being over involved. Uh, he's not an absentee owner, as some people paint him out to be just completely wrong, but he's also not the guy that's going to step in and say, hey, why aren't we signing this guy? What are we doing here? And that doesn't mean you want him to become Jerry Jones, but it does mean you want him to at least ask the right questions and ask them from a standpoint of being aggressive as opposed to a standpoint of being passive and just taking it. And, oh, here I go. I did say I was going to, I blew it. I blew it. I'm sorry. I will try again, maybe like in a month or something. I don't know. Let's do this again Monday. Thank you so much for the question. Thanks so much for listening to this show. I have no earthly idea why you do. 